Welcome back to the report. Now, after the leaders at the African Union summit last month in Ethiopia agreed to send a regional set of troops to fight the Boko Haram group in the northeast of Nigeria, the group seemed to be in retreat. But bombings have still continued in the urban centres, showing that Boko Haram is maybe not as weakened as some suggest. Afsal Ahmed looks at the continuing chaos gripping the country. It's been a busy week for all actors involved in the ongoing Boko Haram conflict. President Goodluck Jonathan, wearing full military uniform, made proud rounds of visits to towns that his soldiers won back from Boko Haram fighters in recent weeks. New supplies of equipment for his troops seem to have boosted their battle morale and the intensity in operations. Nigerian forces on Saturday seized the northeastern border town of Baga, a significant victory as it holds the headquarters for the multinational force of troops assembled from four African countries. Chadian troops are part of this force and they've been engaged in combat against Boko Haram since the African Union gave the go-ahead last month. They're on the dirt roads in Gamburu, parading the latest spoils in the conflict following the capture of Gamburi on Tuesday. Chadian troops killed over 200 Boko Haram fighters in the offensive, where they seized large quantities of small arms, ammunition and vehicles. Pointing to a tank perched on top of a transport truck, a Chadian army officer proudly exclaims, it belongs to Boko Haram, the Chadian army took it from Boko Haram. Troops also captured a Boko Haram fighter known as a butcher, who is accused of slashing the throats of five people. Chad, Niger, Cameroon, Nigeria and Benin are preparing for a major ground and air offensive involving nearly 9,000 men, which is due to take place next month. The regional forces are not the only ones involved in action this week, with several bombings thought to be by the Boko Haram group striking northern cities in Nigeria. Two bombers on Tuesday killed themselves at a crowded bus station in Kanu, with another explosion going off in the neighbouring town of Potiskum. In the attack, the assailant rushed onto a bus, setting off an explosion, killing 16 people. In the city of Bu, there was a similar scene, with an explosion killing at least 17 people. One of the bombers was caught by a crowd and reportedly was beaten to death. The offensive against Boko Haram comes amidst the middle of an election which is set to take place in March. It was supposed to take place this month, but due to security concerns for polling booths in areas within Boko Haram control, it was postponed. The main candidate contesting President Gulag Jonathan is previous military strongman Mohamedou Buhari. He's in London this week for a visit and spoke at Chatham House's International Affairs Institute yesterday to rally support. In his address, he vowed to lead from the front in the fight against Boko Haram if he were elected and said he wouldn't allow the election to be postponed again. If they act unconstitutionally, we'll take them to court. Outside the venue, protesters from both sides made their voices heard with Buhari's camp seeing his military background as key to stopping the killings and Jonathan's camp seeing Buhari as a dictator who would only make the situation worse for the people. He's a dictator. We don't want him. He has no pedigree for the next uh, uh, Nigerian presidency. So we'd rather stick with uh, the good Lord Jonathan that we know. Jonathan has done very great for Nigeria considering the circumstances uh, he inherited when he came into power. There are a lot of happenings in Nigeria which are very, very bad to the, to the progress of Nigeria. And we think, we think Jonathan, we think Buhari is the only person that can do it. Jonathan has been there for six years and nothing, no sector in Nigeria is working as we speak. It has, there has been enough killing. Elections are only a month away, which explains a recent increase in both electoral candidates boasting of their credentials in fighting Boko Haram. President Gulag Jonathan has a month to prove critics wrong and to make up for his lack of success against the group, who have devastated the northeast of Nigeria for the last six years. His opponents will be anxiously waiting in the wings, ready to pounce on any signs of weakness. Afsal Ahmed, The Report.